To be able to do the modifications to my new oven, I need to first do some guinea pig modifications to my old oven. So, lid off. I already unscrewed it so you wouldn't have to suffer watching me do that. So, does everyone remember this little guy here? The exhaust pipe that allows me to pump air into the chamber? Well, it's melted a bit over time. There's still a pretty decent gap and cavity going through. A bit of wasted air coming through here, but it has disintegrated enough and rather than replacing it with another PETG 3D printed exhaust, I am going to design something brand new. I'm going to use this oven as the guinea pig and then I'll take what I learned from this and apply it to my new oven. So let's pull this out. Yep, these nuts are a bit hard to get to. Okay, and I need to unscrew the fan. So, so this is using a 5 volt fan, 5 volt DC that's connected directly to the Reflow Master. This little guy here, and he's in pretty good nick, considering. Okay, some Viton at the back here, which is a little tricky to get off. Just to push the bolts through. I want to reuse this if I can for the fan. Excellent. Okay, wow. That is not in great condition. So the question is, why did this melt? Well, I was experimenting with reflowing SAC 3R5 in this oven, and SAC 3R5 needs to go up to about 245 degrees which is a little bit too much for the PETG to handle. So prior to doing that, this wasn't warped at all. This was actually perfectly straight and it survived all of my reflowing for my low and medium temp paste. But as soon as I tried doing the SAC 3R5, yeah, it destroyed itself. So what do I have in store for a replacement? Well, let's find out. So here is the 3D model of the PETG 3D print that I had inside the oven that I just pulled out in Fusion 360. Obviously it doesn't look melted in here, which is nice. So I need to find a way of reproducing this shape, but in a stronger material. Now, it obviously can't be plastic. I can't 3D print it. There isn't anything that I can 3D print that I've looked into that allow it to go up to the type of temperatures that I need. And although it did survive fairly well in the oven at my low and mid temp ranges, I wanna see how far I can push this new oven. And so producing something as a 3D print is just a bad idea. I also can't use anything that's flammable. So I can't use thick cardboard or a chipboard because they're basically made out of compressed paper. I don't wanna put any wood or anything in there that could potentially combust if it gets too hot. So the only thing really left for me is metal, but I'm not really equipped at all to work with metal in my workshop. I've got a laser, sure, but it can't cut metal. It's only a CO2 laser. So I'd need a plasma laser to be able to cut metal or I'd need a CNC. So that really leaves me only with the ability to work with super thin metals. So I've picked myself up some 0.5 millimeter thick aluminum. The reason I'm excited about this is because it's super thin. It can be cut with scissors, obviously not kitchen scissors, something a bit more durable, but I'll show you what I've got. And it can also be bent fairly easily. Now, this extraction system doesn't have to be sturdy. It doesn't have to be a solid piece of anything. It can be quite flimsy. So long as it's mostly sealed, it's going to push air through properly. And because there's no load on it in terms of weight, it can be quite lightweight. So what I did was jumped into the sheet metal system inside Fusion 360 and I came up with this. So this is exactly the same dimensions, obviously no curved edges because that would be a nightmare to try to cut out of aluminium. And this basically takes the place of the other shape. But because it's made in sheet metal, it unfolds. So what you're seeing here are green lines of the fold lines and black lines are the cut. Well, they're not really black. When you zoom in, you can see that there's a gap. So when I was designing this shape, I needed to make sure that it unfolded correctly. For those of you that haven't worked with sheet metal before in Fusion 360 or in any other tool, go check it out. There's a whole bunch of videos on YouTube about it. I'm not gonna make this a tutorial about how to work in the sheet metal system, 
but it's actually really, really cool. So what I've done is I've turned this into a design that fits on an A4 sheet. Now this is an A3 sheet, but I can now export this as a PDF and take it into any program I want to and cut the outsides out and fit it into an A4 sheet one-to-one. -one. And because it's an A4 sheet, what it means is I can print it. So that'll allow me to stick this on top of the aluminium and trace around it and potentially score along the bend marks to be able to see where they are and then cut around it from there so let's have a look now at what I've got to work with. I have a sheet of aluminium, which is 900 by 300 by 0.5 millimeters thick. As you can see, it's quite flexible. It's quite sharp as well. I have to be very careful not to cut my fingers on it. I have a 90 degree bend aluminium bronze angle. I'm gonna use this for folding over the aluminium. I've got some PC Fahrenheit. It's kind of like JB Weld. This is not for the extraction fan, I'm going to use this for my thermocouples to fill up the holes. It goes up to 260 degrees Celsius or 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to use that later. And I've got myself some heavy duty, 10 times cutting power scissors to be able to cut the aluminium with. These are pretty full on. And it definitely does cut the aluminium because I tested it inside the store. Didn't put a lot of weight at all behind it and managed to cut the corner just here. So this is what I'm going to use. Now, the reason I've got a sheet like this is it fits the A4 space really well. I can either go long ways to, if I needed a gap on each side, but an A4 sheet will fit height-wise here. And I have enough length that I can do three or four or even five revisions, which means if this first one works great, I then have enough room left on the aluminium to do two more for my other oven. So let's get started. I'm going to start off by just cutting a section off. So I'm just give myself an extra bit of room. It doesn't have to be perfectly square. And I'm just going to squeeze with a Stanley knife, a cutting knife. Obviously, I can't cut through the aluminium with this. Well, maybe eventually I could. I don't know. But the idea is if I score it a few times, I should be able to then... Yeah, that's not very straight should be able to fold it and it will just come apart. Here we go. Nice sheet of aluminium ready to go. Nice and sharp on the edge. Wow, that's really not square. Oh well, it doesn't matter for this. So let's mark up the cut lines. Though I was going to take the heavy duty scissors straight to the aluminium, I actually thought what I might do instead, just for the moment, is keep using my knife on the areas that are supposed to be cut. I know I'm not going to be able to cut through, but I figure the further I can dig in with the knife, the easier it will be to cut with the scissors. Assuming I can't actually cut right through anyway. So I'm getting pretty deep here. Look at that. We have the cutout. I still have to cut through here and I'll probably do that with the scissors. So now it's a matter of bending all of the sides. Okay, before we do the bendies, I need to just cut these slots. Definitely would have been easier to hand cut this out than to use my knife. Oh well, maybe for the next few I do. Okay. Now I need to bend and 
This is a really long 90 degree right angle. I'm not even sure which order I should bend this in. Yeah, I don't know. Um, or which direction I should bend it. So let's start with, let's start with the big ones. Let's have a look at how I'm going to stick this together. I am using this tape. This is flashing tape and it's quite heat resistant. I'm using this at the moment to seal up the holes at the back of my current toaster oven where the old thermocouple went. And I'm also using it on the bottom of some PCBs that I use to hold my small boards when I'm reflowing. And I have reflowed with it dozens of times and it does not get affected. It doesn't peel off and yeah it works really well. So I'm going to stick this together instead of welding it because I don't have any welding tools. And then my plan is to actually stick this in the oven against the oven walls instead of screwing it in. Okay, so we are now going to replace this with this, and this is metal, and this will not get destroyed when the oven gets hot, no matter how hot I get it. And that's pretty cool. I might want to straighten these edges, these bends. It's a little bit high here, but I think we can make this work. Okay, let's stick it into the oven, shall we? Okay, truth time. The final piece of the puzzle for this video is this it has to go inside. Now I don't need to use the screw holes because I'm going to tape it in here. I'm going to tape it on this side as well, but there's less room to tape it. So it's going to be quite hard, I think, to get this inside and get my fingers in there. What I'm not going to be able to solve today is how the fan goes on the back because the fan was screwed in the back into the 3D PETG piece and that can't happen with this now. So I'm going to need to find a different mounting mechanism for the outside because the screws actually sit inside these corners. So let's see if it lines up. Well, it does as it should because it's the same dimensions almost as the 3D one. That is actually pretty darn good for my first attempt. So I just need to tape it in place. I think the easiest way to do that, let's just get it back out, is to pre-put some tape on on the bits I can't get to. That is a job well done. It really is. Very happy with that. Whew, that was a lot of work. But I think you'll agree it looks fantastic and it's way more durable than the 3D printed version I had before. It's also going to be much easier to reproduce in terms of dimensions for my new oven. Now I still have to solve the 50 millimeter fan attachment at the back. The good news is for my new toaster oven, I've gone with 80 millimeter fans. And so the actual screw holes for the fans will be further out from the exhaust. So it's going to be much easier to attach. Okay, that wraps up this video. Thank you for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe if you haven't already. Please click the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out. And don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. To my patrons, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Until next time, catch you later. Except there's a plane. Bye, Mr. Plane. Bye.